Hello dear students. So today we are going to discuss about the extra oral radiographic techniques in dentistry. So what is an extra oral radiography? So extra oral images, they are done when you keep the image receptor outside the oral cavity. So these images are useful when you want to view large areas of the skull or jaw which has to be examined or when the patient is unable to open their mouth which we call it as trismus okay T -R -I -S -M -E -S, t-r-i-s-m-e-s trismus to place the image receptor to be viewing that specific area in the intraoral imaging for example a patient has an impacted third molar mandible and the patient has developed infection in that area because of which the patient is unable to open the mouth. So if the doctor wants to treat that particular area, we have to know what is the status of the tube. Of course, intraoral radiography is the preferred technique, but because of the pain and the swelling, the patient is unable to open the mouth now. So you cannot place the image receptor. In such cases also, you can advise the patient to undergo an extra oral image, or you can refer the dentist back that this patient is unable to open the mouth, we have to go in for an extra oral imaging technique. So the most commonly used one is called as a panoramic imaging. We have different names of panoramic imaging. It can be also called as orthopantomograph. Okay, orthopantomograph. The short form is OPG. So OPG, orthopantomograph, orthopantomography panoramic imaging, everything represent the same thing, okay? So this is considered as a screening image in dentistry. So what do you mean by a screening image? A screening image means it gives you an overall idea of the pathologies that the patient is having, okay? So based on the screening image, we can request for other necessary radiograph to know more detailed view about any particular pathology or structure which we want later. For example, the same case of impacted third molar. You can take an extra oral view and see the status of the impacted third molar. As you can see in this image also, there is a third molar which is not going to erupt. So it's going to be impacted. So if there's an infection in that area, we definitely need to know that how we can get this tooth extracted or disimpacted okay so we will take an extra oral one and further if we need any more clarification to find out whether the root of the tooth is on the nerve canal or not or if we do a surgical exposure will it cause any uh, nerve related problems so all these we can understand in an overall view with the help of a panoramic image same as the case for any periapital infection cyst tumors like that so it allows the dentist to view the entire dentition in a single image okay it's like the panoramic view in your phones you have a panoramic view to take an image capture which will help you to take a wider view of the area that you're going to see or you're going to shoot with the photo we have certain anatomical landmarks, the majority of which you have to know. Why? Because it helps to understand the errors that we do in the imaging. So if you find an error that you do, you have to correct that error. If you have to correct that error, you have to know how that particular area normally looks like. So to make sure that you're not doing the error, you look at the particular area and you say that, Okay. This structure has come in its original form, shape and size. It is not distorted. So this image is good. So we have certain anatomical landmarks. Starting from the neck, we have the hyoid bone just below the curvature of the mandibular body. Okay. So this is the region of hyoid bone. And there is a cartilage called as epiglottis in this area which overlaps it. But if you have any 
calcifications in that, you will see them. If you don't have, you will not see them very clearly. It will be just like a shadow. Then in the area of the neck further up, you have the styloid process in the region of the ear. Just below the external auditory meatus, which is marked by the orange one, you will see the styloid process. Sometimes you can even see a shadow of the ear as well. Now moving up, we have the zygomatic arches, that is the cheek area, which is this area is the cheek area. So this is the zygomatic arch. So after the external auditory meatus, you're going to see the zygomatic arch and then it continues forward to the maxilla as a zygomatic process. From the region of zygomatic process, you can see that there is this blue area. So that is the shadow that is marked by the inferior turbinate of the nose, which is a soft tissue which divides the nose or nasal cavity into different compartments. So there is a shadow of the inferior turbinate which is more or less radio-opaque, okay? But it is not completely radio-opaque. Then you are going to see the nasal septum as a clear radio-opacity in the midline. So just below the nasal septum, you are going to find out the floor of the nose like this and the white air that you see here in the radiograph, it will be black color, that is the nasal cavity. The purple area that is marked here, it forms the maxillary sinus region. Okay, so this is the area of the maxillary sinus. If you see here, we have a floor of the maxillary sinus. Okay, and what you see here behind is the zygomatic process of maxilla, which usually it appears as U-shaped on the posterior teeth radiographs. Okay, so we have the maxillary sinus in the maxilla now. Now here what you see is the hard palate. Now the hard palate, it's going to continue as the soft palate backwards and then it will end in uvula. It's like a projection from the soft palate outside, which we can see when you open the mouth of the patient. Okay, so next is your maxillary teeth. Okay, so you have your alveolar process of maxilla here and then all the maxillary teeth. Coming to mandible, we'll start with the fossa here. This is the glenoid fossa of the mandible. So the condylar process is going to be occupied in this fossa. Fossa is like a depression on the bone. So condylar process or condyles, they are present when the mouth is closed in this fossa region. Okay. Coming down from the condyles, you have a triangular shaped area which is usually overlapped with the posterior maxillary teeth. It's called as the coronoid process. Coronoid process, the anterior border extends down as the external oblique ridge, which is seen until the third molar region. Okay. Then further, this area is the area of ramus posterior boundary of the ramus, angle of the mandible, then we have the inferior alveolar canal or what we call it as mandibular canal which ends in the mental foramen in the premolar region. Downwards from the tooth of the root of the third molars or the second molars you can see another radiopaque line which is called as the internal oblique ridge. Then you have the anterior mandible here. Sometimes you can see a lingual foramen here as a central black circle and radiopacity surrounding the lingual foramen which is the genial tubercles. So these are the basic landmarks of a panoramic imaging that you're going to see. Now when you see a panoramic image, both the left 
and the right side of the patient okay the right side of the patient and the left side of the patient it will be able to be differentiated with the help of this sign over here you will have either left side marked or you will have the right side marked so if the left side and the right side are equal across the midline that means your patient positioning is good with the mid sagittal plane if you see a good curvature of the mandible then you say that your horizontal plane was perfect if your horizontal plane is not perfect you are going to end up in cutting of the mandibular bone in the inferior region so these all we are going to learn in the errors in the next week so next before digital panoramic units became available as you know we were using the extra oral films intensifying screens and cassettes to take the extra oral images and also these extra orals were not recommended for diagnosing the dental caries or the periodontal pathologies or lesions or even the fine anatomical structures that you want to know but with the advent or the introduction of digital imaging based on the clarity we can still predict the dental caries periodontal lesions much more clear than an extra oral imaging and definitely there will be a better usage better softwares to do various operations like contrast brightness all these we can change with the digital imaging but with extra oral film based we cannot do this so there is one of the limitations of panoramic imaging that is overlapping of the posterior contact areas Bitewing images had to be used to supplement the panoramic image which we had taken using extra oral imaging technique. So this situation has changed with the introduction of the digital ones and with the use of the specialized softwares that we have. So basically, we have a film-based imaging technique and a direct digital imaging technique. So now you know what is a direct digital imaging. So in your previous level. you have learned about direct digital imaging and this level you learned more details about an indirect one so direct is the one that we use in our labs and clinics like the one we use it for intraoral ones okay so as soon as you take the exposure you see the image on the display whereas an indirect imaging you require to scan the image sensors or image receptors before you can see an image so we have only two types of panoramic units one is film based and the direct digital imaging based which can be either cmos or ccd or a flat panel okay the main difference between the direct and the the direct digital one and the film based one is the image receptor one is the using the film and the other is the sensor So in panoramic imaging the image receptor and the tube head they rotate around the patient okay so the tube head is going to start from here and it is going to rotate around the patient as you can see it will come around and complete the cycle so in the meanwhile when the panoramic machine starts moving from point 1 to 2 the same time the image receptor will start from in the opposite direction it's called as reciprocal movement so one goes like this and the other one goes like this same way but in opposite direction it's called as reciprocal movement okay so here the image receptor and the tube head they rotate around the patient producing a series of individual images series of individual images means what you see in panoramic imaging is a single image of all the structures together 
but this image it will be taken small sections by sections okay small for example uh, like small small units of rectangle okay so here you took the condylar region then you came to the max mandibular third molar maxillary third molar region premolar region then canine and incisor region like that it forms a complete imaging with the help of a series of images okay so such type of imaging together it's called as a tomographic view okay we take single single exposures and then it is combined together to form a single radiograph which covers the entire region of the maxillofacial skeleton okay so when the image receptor moves in the opposite direction if you are using a circular one as in the film based you have a slot to put the drum which has the extra oral image if you are using a rigid holder a cassette holder then you have a rectangular slot so in that slot you put the cassette you load the cassette and when the machine moves around the patient this equipment also moves around the patient and the, the cassette moves little by little inside okay so that is a kind of tromographic imaging now focal trough focal trough is a three-dimensional imaginary horseshoe shaped zone when the patient's jaws are positioned within the zone the resulting radiograph is reasonably clear and well defined so if the jaws are positioned outside of the zone images of the radiograph appear blurred or distinct indistinct so this focal trough what you see here it is an imaginary three-dimensional area that means it is not present in the machine you cannot see it so but we have some uh, some equipments which will help us or some landmarks which will help us in positioning the patient into this focal trough or image layer so this is basically in the shape of a horseshoe as you can see marked by the blue area okay this is a horseshoe shaped structure and it is imaginary layer you cannot see in the, on the machine so you have to make the patient's jaw place exactly on this layer if you want clear images so to make it position on this in this layer we usually ask the patient to bite on a bite block okay so if it's a dentulous patient you ask the patient to bite on a bite block so the incisors of maxilla and incisors of mandible they are going to go into the groove on a bite block and they can hold it until the time the scan is complete if it's an edentulous patient instead of the bite block you are going to have a chin support so a chin support will help in taking the radiograph with the mandible or the jaws in the focal trough region so if the jaws are positioned outside that means your jaw is in front of the focal trough your patient did not bite on the groove and the bite block is inside his mouth okay more areas he has bitten and occupied inside the mouth so then your images will not be clear of structures in this region if your patient is not biting on the groove the incisors is far away from the groove then again any structures coming in that region it is not going to appear clear it's going to be appearing blurred and indistinct so main components of an x-ray panoramic unit or any x-ray tube is the tube head, as you know it has a filament that produces electrons and it has a target on which these electrons are going to collide 
on the area of focal spot and x-rays are generated. The collimators are used in pyramid units. It can be also seen in other units like the 3D imaging. So here the collimator, as you know, it's made of lead. It has an opening which is shaped like a narrow vertical slit in case of pyramid machine. With each different type of uh, imaging, you might encounter different types of collimator shapes. Okay, so the basically these shapes are to reduce the radiation dose and size and shape the X-ray beam depending upon the shape of the opening. So for panoramic, it is narrow vertical slit. That means the collimator, this is the collimator for example, and the slit means there is a small opening on the collimator. For, so from when X-rays comes out, it comes out only through this region in the area of the slit. Okay, so X-rays comes out only in the region of the slit. The other areas are made of lead and it's blocked with the radiation. Okay, so we take the images from, of the single jaw in small, small sections starting from, for example, right and left side of the face to the right side of the face in small, small sections. The vertical angulation of this panoramic tube head, it is not adjustable. It's usually at minus 5 degrees. Some machines have minus 10. You have to re read the user manual of the, each machine to find out what is the vertical angulation. Okay. Now, it always rotates behind the patient's head as the film rotates in front of the patient. Okay, the machine, the tube head rotates on the back side of the patient and the film, if it's used, it rotates in front of them. If it's in the sensor, you will not see any other adjustments on the sensor. Okay, you will just see that the tube head and the sensor, they are rotating around each other. Okay, now you have something called as bite blocks. The white air that you see here, it has to be always protected with a barrier because the, the, the patient is going to bite, there will be saliva contamination. So it is an area which is critical and it has to be always maintained, okay? So bite block and then you have head, oh sorry, this is the ear rods, okay? You will also find head support. Here the patient can hold the arms. This is going to be slightly different in different panoramic units. This is the digital panoramic unit. Okay, you can see the uh, collimator on the system itself. This is the area of the control panel which we, where we can adjust the mandible. If it's a big mandible, if it's a small mandible, or if it's a medium size, the shape is different. All of them we can adjust in this area. And what type of imaging that we want? You want a panoramic imaging, or you want only the TMJs, or you want the skull radiography, you have to select in this machine. So head positioner. So each panoramic unit includes a head positioner that is used to align the patient's teeth as accurately as possible. So head positioner will include a lot of components. It includes a chin rest, a notched bite block, so chin rest, it's usually for edentulous patient, bite block is for dentulous patients, a forehead rest, which rests on the forehead, and lateral head supports or guide. So in some machines, you will find both ear rods and the uh, head supports, uh, head rest, okay? And in some of them, you are going to find uh, only the head positioners, except the ear rods, okay? So these are some of the extra things that you will find in the machine. The main components here to operate the machine, exposure controls like milliampere, kilovoltage settings, okay? In the intraoral ones, the kilovoltage is not adjustable, but for the extraoral ones, we can adjust the kilowatt, but the exposure time, it cannot be changed. So based on the patient and the indication, the type of radiograph, it can be changed. Film and intensifying screen. So film-based panoramic imaging, they use 
as a type of extraoral screen film sensitive to the light emitted from the intensifying screen. So if you remember, if you are using a green colored light emitted by the intensifying screen, then the film should have a sensitive dye which is sensitive to the green color. Okay. Other color that you have is the blue color and also you'll have the ultraviolet radiation. Okay. So it's called as a screen to film combination. The colors of this intensifying screen, the light color emitted by the screen should match with the uh, sensitivity of the extraoral film. If the uh, intensifying screen emits green light and the extraoral film is sensitive to blue light, it will not produce a good image. The image will be having radiographic noise or foggy or unclarity. Okay. So advantages and disadvantages of panoramic imaging. The advantage is the field size. That means the entire maxilla and mandible can be seen in one panoramic image. Ease of use and ease of educating the patient. Patient acceptance because they do not have to hold the sensors or hold the films inside the patient's uh, oral cavity. Less radiation exposure in comparison to a full mouth radiographic survey. Disadvantages, image sharpness. An older film-based panoramic unit, they, the images are not as sharp as those seen in the intraoral radiographic films. So this is changing because of the development of the digital radiography. So these units can open contacts and detect small carious lesions. So image sharpness with film base, it is very low, but with the digital, it's good. So you can even view the open contacts and detect small carious lesions. The focal trough limitations. So structures must be within the focal trough or they are going to appear out of focus. If proper positioning and technique are not used, there will always be some overlapping of the teeth and distortion of the images. Compared with the cost of an intraoral radiographic unit, a panoramic unit is more expensive. Okay, so definitely it's an extraoral radiography, it's going to be an expensive uh, more than the intraoral one. So, when you are going to expose a panoramic radiograph, what are the tips that you have to follow to get a good image? If you get a good image, there are no errors, no repeats. But if you get errors, you have to first look at the error, what is the mistake, and then correct and do the exposure. Because if your image is not good, it can give a false diagnosis and false treatment plan for the patient, which we call as misdiagnosis and a wrong treatment plan, which is not ethically acceptable. So tips for successful imaging, use a plastic barrier on the white block, always check the manufacturer's recommendation for exposure factors. Every machine will have different type of exposure factors, different type of kilo, kilo voltage in which we are functioning. Focal spot size will be different. The specifications will be different. So you have to check always the manufacturer's manual. Explain the procedure to the patient what you're going to do. Once you explain that you have to bite the anterior teeth on the groove on the bite block, you have to hold the hand on the hand support on the extra machines, then you'll be doing a adjustment of the head support and the headdress on the forehead. You are going to place the mid sagittal plane of the patient coherent or in tune or in line with the laser guideline that you see in the panoramic image. So you have a mirror on the panoramic image. You stand behind the patient. You can look at the mirror. So you will see the patient and you will see the lead line through the mid sagittal plane. If your patient is not positioned correctly with the center of the face, that means through the forehead, the nose, the tip of the nose, the lips and the chin is not coinciding with the laser beam that is run, running through the mid sagittal plane, you have to make it coincide by doing the adjustment. Then the second one is a horizontal line on the side of the face. 
okay so vertical line mid sagittal plane we are going to see the mirror and correct that on the patient then the horizontal line it's called as the frankfurt's horizontal plane so that is connecting the infravital rim to the outer external auditory meatus so here you have to ask the patient to tip the head slightly down to make this plane parallel to the floor okay so once you instruct this then you should also say to the patient that the machine will move around the patient but the patient should not move sometimes you can hear sounds as well in the machine but whatever happens or whatever the patient listens to not to get distracted but to stay calm and not to move during the exposure another thing is to ask the patient's tongue to be rested against the palate and close the mouth by biting on the first molar maxilla and mandible together so when you ask the patient to keep the tongue close to the palate the air space will not be seen on the final radiograph if air space is seen it looks like a fracture line so to avoid that tongue should be touched to the palate or the roof of the mouth then while the machine starts moving and the sounds are heard for the exposure ask the patient to hold the breath for a single minute if possible okay so that will give you a better image so coming by the points back here so plastic barrier in the bite block manufacturer's recommendation procedure you have to explain to the patient make the patient wear the lead apron which is without the thyroid collar if there's a thyroid collar on the lead apron it will give you a radio opaque artifact in the midline region of the mandible extending sideways to the right and the left side ask the patient to remove all the radiolucent objects any clips any earrings any chains earphones anything which is metallic uh, and can appear in the image if you do not remove these objects you're going to see something called as ghost images okay that means those structures are not there on the patient's skeleton the facial region maxilla or mandible would you see those structures in the x-rays okay then you have the patient to stand straight as possible place the anterior teeth in the groove of the bite block adjust the mid sagittal plane adjust the frankfurt's plane parallel to the floor ask the patient to close the lips and to swallow and place the tongue against the roof or the palate of the mouth ask the patient to remain still during the exposure if the patient moves there will be motion blurring and you have to repeat the entire scan once again so in this unit you can again see this is the area where your x-ray um, dental x-ray tube will be there and this is the sensor part this is the digital imaging technique okay so this is the area where which captures the images on the patient and you can see that the patient is biting on the bite block with the chin position if the patient is edentulous we can use a chin support which is specifically for the the patients who are edentulous so that's all about the panoramic imaging so we're going to see the panoramic image in the labs okay